Good morning, folks. Today we've got a look at the sun, several climate points, and then we'll take a look at what we think really happened to the Georgia Guidestones. Right now, we've got a super calm star that we're still monitoring for those plasma filaments as they enter Earth-facing position, several active regions as well. We had been expecting a combination of a coronal hole stream with minor interplanetary shocks from little CMEs, and it appears they are beginning to arrive this morning. Far right side of the chart and focus where the telemetry all begins changing in unison may produce geomagnetic activity today. And of course, we do still have the eyes on the sunspots within those active regions. The bulk of them are approaching Earth-facing position along with those large plasma filaments. We're on eruption watch. But now let's go to climate science where they're doubling down on Arctic amplification. And when you see these discussions online, recall, the foundation of this is actually ozone loss, which is still breaking records despite the Montreal Protocol allegedly working. It's not. Not only is Arctic warming one-third of all global warming, not only is it ozone loss and not CO2, but that sustained ozone loss is a function of Earth's weakening magnetic field, which makes the continued loss of ozone actually make sense since the weakening magnetic field is still marching forward. And speaking of which, if that is the case, there should be a tropical ozone loss and boy oh boy is there seven times greater than the polar ozone holes, which first of all, tells us a lot about climate change at mid and low latitudes. And yeah, not a great look for blaming carbon. But if this concept seems familiar to you, a tropical ozone hole, that's because we reported the preprint of this exact study back on January 3rd. That's right, six months ago. We knew this preprint had all the merit in the world and further pushed a logical mind towards the explanation that Earth's magnetic field loss is affecting the whole planet. In fact, we put it in our latest book, that's page 68 of the Observer Supplement. And to that end, folks, it's been a couple of months now since I challenged the world to prove me wrong on this exact point in climate science. I can tell you that this video has put several professors and NASA scientists on our side of the argument over the last several weeks and no, Nobody has come anywhere close to proving a whiff. The link to this video is below, along with the new e-store where you can find our books on the subject, observerranch.podia.com. Now, how about that explosion at the Georgia Guidestones? Folks, every news story I've seen so far says people detonated an explosive device, but Billy and I examined the video quite a bit. First, these two camera angles cover 360 degrees of view around the monument, and if they caught the explosion, they caught the people coming to plant the explosive device, in which case, no part of this act of terrorism would be released to the public at all. But Billy noticed the utility light. Why did it get brighter the moment of the explosion? Then I started wondering what kind of explosion is blue and has no fire or smoke. If you guys can help answer both the blue light and the utility light brightening simultaneously, and by the way, the fog around there is the exploded granite, we'd greatly appreciate your take in the comment section, because otherwise I'm starting to think this was a lightning strike rather than a bomb. And of course, if you know anything about the Georgia Guidestones, them getting hit by lightning would spawn a whole different set of questions, wouldn't it? Anyway, we greatly appreciate your support. Yes, the new store is associated with our largest and ongoing project, Observer Ranch. We've got shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.